Internet Explorer 8. The browser wars, they've been waging again over the last few years, with Firefox gathering quite a bit of attention amongst Internet users, and Opera's been chiming in here and there, and even Apple, with their Safari browser, they're doing their best to work their way onto PCs. Now, the good news is that us consumers, we have a reasonable choice when it comes to what browser we use. And although Microsoft does have the lion's share of the market, there are some pretty good alternatives lying around. Now, Microsoft has released Internet Explorer version 8, and although Microsoft have promised a lot of cool changes, is it worth using it if you're not a Microsoft Internet Explorer user? Or maybe you're happily using version 6 or 7, should you bother upgrading to version 8? Well, let's just say that right off the bat, Internet Explorer 8 is free, so cost isn't an issue. But then again, I've never paid for a browser anyway, so it's probably a mute point. So is it better? Well, that's something that we'll try and address as we talk about Internet Explorer 8, which Microsoft promises will deliver greater speed and security, both of which are things that most people would be pretty happy with, truth be told. Now, firstly, I will point out that IE 8 is just a Windows Vista and Windows Server 2008 release. So if you aren't running either of those two operating systems, then turn around and go back. Now, if you are running Vista or 2008, then you can move on and head off to this URL that you see here, and you can download IE8 by clicking on this orange Download Now link here. Now, to save time, I've already gone ahead and I've downloaded the setup file, and I'll go to my desktop here where I've placed the file. So we'll double click on it, and that'll start up the installation wizard. So the first thing we'll need to do here is click Next, and then we'll need to accept the terms laid out in the license agreement. So we'll click the I Accept button, and here we're going to leave the default to install the updates to Internet Explorer. That way we can keep it up to date against any security threats. So we'll leave that box checked. We'll click Next. And then the install wizard is going to head off online and download the updates it needs, and then install IE8. Now, since it does have a little bit of work to do, we're going to pause the video so you're not waiting around, and we'll be back shortly. Okay, the installation is now complete, and you'll note that we're told that we will need to restart our computer, so we're going to pause the video once more, we'll reboot this machine, and we'll be back in a moment. All right, we're back, our machine's been restarted, and IE8 is now fully installed. Now, the first time we load up IE8, it will start up a setup wizard, which lets you perform some basic configuration. Now, you can skip this step if you like, of course. You can simply click Ask Me Later, and you can configure the things that this wizard is concerned about later on. But let's click through it, so we'll click Next. Firstly, we get the option of turning on Suggested Sites, which is an online service that logs your browsing history in order to make personalized website suggestions. Now, I really don't see this being all that popular amongst experienced campaigners, where the desire for privacy is more important than maybe getting a list of websites that I might like. But hey, I'll leave that up to you. I'm not going to turn this feature on. I'll just click Next. And now we can set up IE8 with Express Settings, which will configure our search provider. And by the way, it will retain whatever search provider you had installed before you upgraded to IE8. So if you had, say, Google set as your preferred search provider, you'd see that listed here. Now, the default is to download updates as Microsoft release them. We'll be using these accelerators, and we're going to talk more about accelerators later on. The smart screen filter will be enabled, and we'll use updates for the compatibility view, and we'll discuss that later on as well. Now, if you do happen to just cancel this wizard here without choosing one of these two options, then there will be certain features that won't be enabled, for example, the smart screen filter. So it's probably a good idea to at least use the Express settings and then click Finish. But I'm not going to do that, since this way you'll get to see what's enabled and what isn't in a default installation without using this wizard. So we'll click Cancel. And it's worth pointing out at this time that since IE8 has been installed and it's now replaced IE7, we were able to launch it through the Quick Launch down here or from the regular Start menu. And when you fire up, Internet Explorer for the first time, you might notice that there are a few things that have changed since version 7. Now, like with version 7, there is no menu at the top of 
the window, these menu functions have been moved over to the right hand side of IE and those functions are accessible by these buttons here. Hi, and thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see the full length version of this video, please visit our website www.winstructor.com where you'll find lots of training videos that'll help you understand IT. We look forward to seeing you there.